What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am so excited because I think I finally found the best GoPro angle of all time for POV mountain biking. It's just so immersive. It feels like you're right there along for the ride. You can go super wide and see your surroundings. You can see how gnarly the trail or the terrain is. I'm just fired up on it. If you've been following my content for a while now, you could probably guess that my favorite camera of all time is the GoPro Max. I just love the cameras so much, especially the Max. Typically, I use it in hero mode on my chest to get really stable riding shots, but this is a little different. I'm actually utilizing the 360 footage for once and figuring out how to like stitch the angles up nicely and dial it in. I found an angle on my helmet that I really love. It looks good on dirt jumps. It looks good in steep and early terrain. It is so diverse. The best part about 360 footage is you can frame it however you like. You can literally use the exact same file and crop it horizontally for YouTube or vertically for YouTube Shorts, Instagram, or TikTok. It's taken a lot of messing around to figure out, but I'm so stoked that I finally figured it out. So let's dive right into it. I'll show you the mounts I use, the settings I use, and some of the tricks I use to get the shots I do. What's great about this angle is it looks amazing in both vertical and horizontal modes. This is how I mount it. First of all, you want to have a helmet that has not too many vents on the front. My laser jackal helmet is pretty good for that. You can see the front of it here has the GoPro mount sitting there and there's a nice flat space. You want a nice big flat surface so you can get as much of the sticky mount onto the helmet as possible. You don't wanna be able to see too much of it. I have a bit poking out here through the vent, but that's no big deal. The edges are mounted on really stable. The Max isn't the lightest camera out there, so you wanna make sure you have a nice strong mount. The next thing you have to do is mount the Max to your actual helmet. Now, I like to do it horizontally, so it's the exact same angle as the visor. If you look at it, the angle of the camera is paralleling the visor, which is perfect. That's what you want. And you wanna actually have it sitting horizontally like that. The reason for that being is it creates a stitch in the 360 footage that goes directly into your forehead, which is perfect because you're never looking at your forehead. And then when you're pointing straight ahead out at the trail, the stitch point won't be on your bike or your front tire or your handlebars or anything like that. The stitch point will actually be somewhere on the trail. Stitch points always equal imperfections. The thing is, no one's noticing an imperfection on the trail. Everyone will notice an imperfection on your bike because when we're watching someone ride from their point of view, we catch our eyes being drawn to the handlebars a lot of the time. This is a mistake I see a ton of riders make, even other GoPro athletes and people on Instagram who have huge followings. They might post the sickest terrain, the gnarliest clip, it is so cool, and then you look down at their handlebars and they're kind of wavy and doing something weird. The reason for that being is because their camera here is pointed down like this. It's too far. I also find it gets a little bit in your line of sight when it's like that, and I don't like that at all. Having the camera up more like this makes it more out of your way. It's not in your line of sight, and it gives you a way better stitch point. Make sure it's nice and tight. Really crank that mount, and then on the rougher terrain, it's not gonna move around. Your visor's gonna move before your camera even moves at all. What I love about the higher angle of this camera mount is it is really complementary of gnarlier riding. Take this trail here, for example. It is very steep terrain. It is pretty rough and it has lots of unique features. By mounting the camera above my chest or my chin, I'm looking up and over at what's ahead a little more and I get a better sense of scale of everything that I'm on. On the dirt jumps, like this line right here, it is kind of the same feel. You can really tell how steep and big those jumps are. There's still a little bit of GoPro effect. It is still a lot smaller than in person, but you can really feel what it is like yeah. to be the rider in that moment. <laughs> and what's great is the crop is so wide, especially when you use vertical footage for something like YouTube Shorts or Instagram that you can actually see the rider in front of you the whole time super easily. 
even when you're at the base of the takeoff and they're in the air. This is super sick for those moments where you want to train your friends through a set of dirt jumps. Even on flatter, smoother trails like this one here, where I prefer a chest mount typically so I can really feel out the aggressiveness and the body movements of the line in the corners, it still looks pretty cool. I would say this angle is probably my second choice in that scenario. And if the trail's a little steeper and really intense, then I think this angle is still the very best. I'm also gonna dive in and give you an example of how I use 360 mode on my chest and how I frame that in because that can be really cool on jump trails. Before we jump straight into that though, let's look at the settings that I'm using on this camera for these shots because I'm sure many of you are wondering about that. Typically, I shoot in a lower frame rate, like 24 frames per second, because my personal preference is that cinematic look. We have motion blur on the side of the trail. It makes everything feel a little more immersive and fast. You feel a little more like you're there and it's a little more intense feeling. It does roughen up the footage a little bit, but I feel like GoPro's hyper smooth is so dialed that as a 360 camera, they are ahead of the game with other cameras with regard to the stabilization and the 24 frames looks awesome. If you bump it up to 60 frames per second, you get that little bit smoother of a look, but it also makes the footage feel a bit slower. The problem with doing 60 frames with the max is you can't get higher than 3K. So by the time you crop it in and export, you're not gonna ever get more than 1080p resolution, but that's the case either way. For me, I'm editing in the Quick App versus in Adobe Premiere with a reframing plugin or something because I'm not trying to get the best quality footage possible on this camera. I want a quick, easy way to edit really sick looking footage. And I'm assuming majority of you watching this video want the same thing. Not all of us are super tech savvy. We just want a quick, easy way to share riding and make it look really good. And for that reason, I keep all my color settings on the stock settings when I'm shooting in 360 mode with this camera. Typically, I would adjust things and I would have flat color, low sharpness, native white balance, but I don't actually do that in 360 mode. I keep that vibrant GoPro color, I have it in high sharpness, and I have auto white balance. The reason for that being is I'm doing all my editing in the GoPro Quick App, so I don't wanna have to really get super in depth with the edit. I'm not really trying to color grade it like crazy. I'm just doing light color grades, or if I'm in a rush, I can post it as is and still be happy with the color. Here's a clip of myself riding with some friends at Sugarloaf Mountain with the GoPro Max on my chest. I just have it on the chest mount, swung all the way down and pressed record, nothing else to it, super simple. And then I went into the GoPro Quick App and reframed it however I wanted with keyframes and then exported it and this is what I got. There is one trick that you're really gonna wanna know when you're reframing your footage in the 360 cameras. And this took me months and months to figure out and it was the simplest thing. Here's the trick. When you're editing, always turn off horizon lock and turn off world lock. Once you make that first keyframe in the quick app and then press play, the camera will follow the trail all the way through. This was such a struggle for me for the longest time because I ride a lot of trails with fast, tight corners, and I would be like putting in 20 or 30 keyframes every 10 seconds. It was so frustrating. 
that simple solution fixed that problem for me and the app really dials it in. The chest mount in the hero mode is pretty straightforward. Just mount the mount right into your chest like that and then take the camera, put it on upside down like this and then go down all the way. Oh, that was sick, so good. I will also take this exact same camera setup and throw it on the chin of my helmet. I had a lot of fun doing that this summer as well. Here is a clip from that right there. Look at how sick this looks. When you get it up on your chin, just that little bit higher, it is nice on that steep terrain. Okay everyone, that is a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that new camera angle got you fired up because I am really stoked on it right now. I actually can't wait to go out for a ride this evening because we just got some rain and the trails are gonna be mint tonight. Okay, thanks so much again you guys. I appreciate all of you. And if you're interested in the GoPro Max, go check out the link in my description here because I do get the tiniest commission from GoPro for every camera that sells and it means so much to me. I'm passionate about these cameras, I love them and I'm trying my hardest to be a GoPro athlete. So I appreciate your support. Thanks so much and I'll see you in another video real soon. Peace out.